Very well, welcome back now. Let's take a look at um, Ion Politics today. And today, let's talk about something quite different today. We are only 49 days to the polls, and Kenya plays a very, very big role uh, locally and internationally, so to speak. Now, today, let's focus on the issue of international policy mm. and diplomacy, how the polls will affect it negatively or positively. And on that note, I have two gentlemen in studio. I have Edward Wanyonyi, who is a researcher, a trainer, a speaker and communications expert in Africa security and development progress. He's also uh, an expert in foreign policy and so much more. Quite a heavy CV there. Edward, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. And uh, Kevin Katisia, who is an advocate of the High Court in the Republic of Kenya. Kevin, Karibu. Thank you, Victor. Gentlemen, um, I have to start where we should, what we witnessed yesterday. Um, I think that would be the, better, the best way to start. So let me start with you, Edward. Um, the case that we witnessed yesterday at the Jakarta grounds, what do you make of that? I think historically Jacaranda has been a battleground for elections from <laughs> 1992. I mean, there is no election which has spared Jacaranda. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be news when we get an election cycle that Jacaranda does not have any kind of, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. outburst. Mm -hmm. It's significant in many ways. And at the same time, I think a lot of the times you would find that uh, all the political actors mm -hmm. in that space would want to be able to have a stab not only because it's in the city, it's just like you, your typical Uhuru Park mm. and how significant it is for Kenya's elections context. Yeah. So I feel that, um, one, there is a failure by the political actors mm. and duty of care by the, you know, political organizers mm. and also a challenge in terms of better crowd control. Yeah. And that's, I think, what led to the kind of chaos that we saw yesterday. Mm. I, I, I like the way you started, that uh, Jacaranda suffered its, its fate. It's known for, for violence. But then now, having, Kevin, yes. uh, a person like Deputy <coughs> President also yes. facing the wrath of, you know, rad youth, two warring factions, perhaps we, we, we should learn from what happened in 2007, should we? Yes, we should. And uh, Victor, looking at what happened yesterday, yes, you saw there were two... Uh, bookings of the ground mm. where the MP and Bakasi Babu we know had booked and also where the UDA MP candidate uh, Moredi mm. also had booked and all of them were told to cancel to avoid the the, 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 the chaos mm. and the violence which may may occur mm. and you saw now the ODM team Babu they, 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 they withdrew mm. but of course even after withdrawing their troops were already there because uh, they were cancelling in the morning. Yes. So their supporters were already there. And now, uh, on the side of UDA, they said we must go. So now I think it was unfortunate how I wish the UDA uh, team also withdrew from having the rally. Because you see now, mm. we have UDA supporters and also Azimio supporters. Mm. Because when Bab withdrew, his supporters were still there. Yeah. Of course, the police tried to do their work, but uh, unfortunately, you, you saw there were some people who were injured, like mm. the UDA candidate, which was very unfortunate. Yeah. And I think it is item, Victor, we try to encourage our, uh, the, the, the candidates should encourage their supporters yeah. to exercise some, some tolerance. Because uh, going with how it is now, mm. uh, this may be a recipe of uh, violence mm. in the coming elections. Yeah. So I think it is important, and I think the IBC has always done that. In 2017, you saw how IBC was telling candidates to share their, pro their campaign program, mm. even with, so the, with the IBC, no so that there's no clash. Right. I think that's what should happen, mm. whereby the campaign program, between 49 days is a, is a little time. Mm. Let these parties share their campaign program. But you see, Victor, uh, the campaign program to be shared yeah. is usually for the presidential. But you see now, if, the, if, if uh, Ruto shares his campaign, so hard to man, uh, exactly. Uh, so the MP yeah. may say, yeah. "I will. Uh, this is my area. I can go any, anywhere within my area." Mm. So I think it is a matter of, uh, as we do politics, and I, from what I, I read, an article by my, by the former uh, Chief Justice mm. William Mutunga, uh, my senior, and uh, it is unfortunate that uh, Kenyans are seeing that the two uh, warring camps, mm. uh, Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. Uh, both of them have something we can pinpoint and say this need not be done 
this is what should be done. Yeah, you can see there are some... They know, they know some, each other. So they know, and they know each other very well. Mm -hmm. So I think it is... And, and, and I liked also how the president mm -hmm. tried to uh, uh, stay away from from politics this mm -hmm. time around. Even so, when he was with the uh, former prime minister yesterday, he did not even do politics in church. Right. So I think it is important that uh, uh, all these candidates, and of course I saw the UDA Secretary mm. General writing to the ABC asking them to disqualify Babu we know yeah. for organizing all that. We don't know whether it is him who organized. All we know is that it is him it who is. had booked Absolutely. the ground, okay. but it but um, later cancelled. All right, let, let, yes. let, me, let me come back to you, Edward, briefly. Um, IEBC sat for 10 days, and we have got uh, a couple of no candidates who've been cleared. We have Kotobinyandeti, uh, Malombe, and Sakaja. Uh, those three actually were in the lips of so many people. But then, what's your take on that? The performance of IBC Dispute Resolution Committee, uh, which was sitting for 10 days, have done that the job to your, to, your, to, to your perception? I think Wakili here will be in a better place to be able to uh, address yeah. the issues that are actually in front of the High Court mm -hmm. at the moment. As we, we know very well, some of the matters have been taken by DCI mm -hmm. further. And um, I feel that um, the challenges that uh, the institution faces are challenges which mm -hmm. are structural. Yeah. And perhaps they actually are an indictment on our, our on our legislature itself mm. in terms of the kind of capacity they give and the legal mandate they give to IABC mm. and how IABC frames this issue it calls independence because it's from that independence that it's now saying that it mm. lacks jurisdiction mm. then you wonder then uh, what is the precedence that it's actually setting yeah. you know in this kind of uh, cases um, and, and I understand very well there are issues of natural justice there's proof beyond reasonable doubt mm. and the other parameters that are there but I feel that perhaps the next parliament needs to really critically examine the role and the mandate of IBC mm. and how it relates with other institutions. Independence cannot be outside other institutions mm. and forms of collaboration with yeah, other agencies. Because, you know, if what, what, what happens when KRS starts saying that it's independent? Mm. You know, what, what happens with the collaboration with the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics or with Central mm. Bank? With the, you can't be independent in yeah. a country. You have to work with others. And you also have to defer to other institutions. Yeah. And in this case, I think... IBC working together with the Commission of Investor Education would have addressed some of these matters mm. prior to us coming to this kind of phase. But I feel that uh, as the matter goes to court, of course, we cannot be able to preempt the subjudice rule. We will want to wait on it and see how the matter will be progressed, if at all the matter will now be able to be taken up by the ODPP. Right. Thank you. Uh, well said. Um, Katisha, yes. from the legal aspect, yes. IBC said that they were not in a position to investigate some issues. So yes. that is now under the jurisdiction of the DCI to undertake. But then, mm. how is dependent is IBC mm -hmm. and to your, you know, gauge, how did they perform? Uh, first of all, Victor, I would like to start by saying that mm. uh, Article 88, mm -hmm. 4E of the Constitution of Kenya, yes. 2010, and Section 74 of the Elections Act uh, establishes what we call now the IBC Dispute Resolution Committee, mm. which hears and determines disputes uh, regarding nomination and the clearance of candidates by IABC. And looking at what uh, the committee has been doing since when it was launched yes. by the chair, and Victor, I must tell you, I have sat in those committees almost every day mm. because I, I, I have been representing Wiper Democratic Movement mm -hmm. in all their matters at, yes. the, at the committee. Even the matter of Honorable Avinia, the matter of Honorable Malombe, mm. the, the matter of Governor Songo, I have been participating. Though I, will, I would not like to say much because mm. some of the matters have not been determined, yes. uh, like the one for Songo, which may be Still active. determined today, mm. in the course of today, but uh, one thing I can comment is that uh, I have seen a lot of uh, maturity and independence by the committee. Remember, the IBC Dispute Resolution Committee mm -hmm. has been working under a lot of political pressure, looking at the cases brought before them. Mm -hmm. 260 something cases. Yes. Right. A lot, and this, they have been sitting every day from 8 a.m 
to even late in, into the night at around 10 p.m. Mm. And, th and this is the first time we are, we are seeing the IBC committee really working. You know, because, uh, you know, we also must appreciate that our democracy is growing mm -hmm. and people are fighting for their rights. You know, Victor, Article 38 of the Constitution is very clear that every Kenyan has a right to vote mm. and a right to participate in the elections, yeah. to be voted for or to vote for somebody else. So uh, what I would like to say is that uh, with regards to the matters which have been determined by the committees, mm -hmm. So far, in my opinion, the committee has been very fair. Because if you put a matter before the committee, mm. and the committee has no jurisdiction to hear such a matter, do you expect them to hear it? The issue of uh, university degrees, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah? If Sakaja has brought before the committee an university degree, mm -hmm. and Wavinya, and Zamboja, yes. and this is the same, same degree, they used, they presented before the same, same commission in 2017. Mm -hmm. And they were cleared. Where now, since, since then, when they were cleared... What has changed? What has changed? Where was Commission of University Education and the DCI, where was they then? When DCI says they will summon Sakaja, mm -hmm. yeah, to look at his degree issue, yeah, where were they in 2017? Mm -hmm. And Victor, to be honest, some of these people are justified into saying that uh, they think the state is interfering. Because where was the state then? Mm. Yeah. And the IBC was very right because they have no jurisdiction over yeah. the issue of degree. Let, let the DCI do their work. Mm. If they do their IBC work... IBC said uh, that they don't have a yes. mandate to investigate the papers. Exactly. Okay, uh, if, they, if they do their work and they establish that uh, Sakaja or Avenia, mm. their degrees are not good, the High Court rules so, the IBC will act on the order of the court. Okay. So as I finish, Victor, on that yes. matter, uh, remember also the, com the committee has had some challenges. I was able to see a situation whereby, you know, the committee supervises the, the work of the returning officers. Mm -hmm. If somebody says, this uh, road did not clear me and I was qualified, now look at the issue of presidential candidates. Mm -hmm. You saw what happened to Jimmy Wanjigi and uh, Nyambane. Mm -hmm. And now when Jimmy Wanjigi yes, when, 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 Jim, right. when Jim Wanjigi went to the committee and I was there, I was seated there when his case was being heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in all the other cases, Victor, it was the complainant versus the returning officer. Mm -hmm. So now Jimmy Wanjigi said, I am the complainant. I want this committee to bring the returning, the presidential returning officer, who is uh, Chabukati, here so that I can cross-examine him. What did the committee say? We have no jurisdiction over our boss. The chairman is their boss. So the question is, who will give those complainants justice? So the committee has their own challenges. And that's why now we have High Court, mm. which now has jurisdiction, which has overall jurisdiction to now hear any further complaints and make final orders. Mm. So what, what, what I can ask of the committee, and remember, these committees are, made, are composed of uh, lawyers who are in IBC's legal panel and uh, IBC commissioners. Mm. So they may be, they, they could be there to also implement the decisions of the commission, so, uh, disregarding yes. what the complainants are saying. All right. so, so I think, Victor, it, uh, it is high time that uh -huh. IBC, as I conclude, Victor, that because it's a very um, a good uh, motive right. point, as IBC conducts these elections, let us let them demonstrate to the public that they will conduct free, fair, and credible elections. Because the issue of fairness, Victor, and the credibility begins now at the clearance. If people say this person who was our candidate was qualified, but IBC for their own maybe uh, political reasons, mm. because some people are saying IBC is being influenced by some other factors. So let them demonstrate and let them give public confidence that they will conduct free fair okay. and credible elections. Edward, you are getting that fire from, from him. Um, of course, he'll be sitting in so many committees and, uh, you know, uh, at the bar, or so many of the contestants and candidates. But he's uh, firing IBC of not being independent. Um, but IBC, on the other hand, says that they've done their job and they're ready for the elections. I don't know what you think from where you sit. 
I think there are parameters. I yes. mean, from, 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 from any kind of election, there are parameters for assessing electoral preparedness. Uh -huh. There are factors at looking at basically the capacity to actually deliver a vote that is credible. Yes. But one thing we have to appreciate is that in Africa and in most of these countries, even if you bring 12 angels from heaven <laughs> to administrate over the elections, we'll still have people who will contest it. <laughs> They will still contest it because <laughs> everyone, even who feels like they are just having, you know, uh, yeah, their family members. Yes. yes. Even if their person is having only their family members voting for them, they'll <laughs> still feel that they have been aggrieved by right. IEBC, mm -hmm. by whatever electoral body is. And it's just challenges in terms of uh, we are looking at the socialization of our society mm. in terms of elections is that that is the point to make it. Right. Because that allows you to get into the public office and where you can be able to loot and benefit from impunity. It is, we are not looking at elections to develop our people mm. most of the time. We are looking at it as a form of patronage. Mm. And so people have invested and vested their interests in that election. You have seen people who are actually resigning from very well-paying jobs mm. because they know that they, when they get into the public office, yeah. they will lose their accountability that actually they would actually have in other public offices mm. or in other jobs. So the, the, the space for scrutiny is lower it's within free, the public it's office. Wheel. It's very fluid. Yeah. And then now you're able now to loot or benefit from it. Mm. We have yet to socialize ourselves to a place whereby our elections actually come to be public service. Mm. And so with that kind of stake and interest, everyone will complain. Everyone will feel aggrieved. Yeah. And the claims of unfairness, even when you hear, you know, some of the candidates he's actually talked about is representing, I shudder, mm. you know, in as much as he believes in terms of the cab rank rule, mm. but I shudder to, to see that some of these people are actually contesting or actually even having the audacity to actually present themselves to mm. be voted. But it's the poverty of our integrity as a society. Yeah. In terms of looking at ourselves in the mirror and saying, really, do I actually embody the ethos of public service mm -hmm. and do I actually want to be voted? Mm -hmm. And when you feel someone actually is actually amassing and using levels of criminality to impose themselves as a candidate, yeah. even when they know very well that they can beat the system and escape it, but deep down themselves they know that they have challenges with this challenge of integrity, mm -hmm. then you really question yourself and say, why, where, where are we going as a country? Mm -hmm. Beyond just winning this election, what happens to the soul of this country yeah. when such people will be entrusted with leadership positions. Mm. So I think it's just an introspection to ask ourselves that besides the institutional capacity mm. of IEBC or any other organization, are we actually ready for a free and fair election? That and what will question. it take are we ready actually? For that? Are, are we ready? Because a free and fair election means there have to be lo losers. But we seem to create an impression that yes. all of us must win. It because, is not because possible. Because elections in Kenya and even Africa at large is a do or die. Yes, and that's the problem because we have staked the entire development of a nation outside the role of actually government just running yes. without necessarily. We can't even have an opportunity to breathe. <laughs> Economies are shutting down, yeah. you know. People are telling you, I can't even sign this tender because an election is here. Mm. You know, wait until the, after the election. We can't even have the opportunity to have an election and people continue with work. We yeah. have to declare a public holiday. You can look at the paralysis that actually occasions our kind of elections. Mm. Well, other countries out there, you'll find that people will go and vote and continue working. You don't lose that day. Some of them are done online. You go yes. to the office, mm. you open your yeah. computer. But you look at votes. it, you yeah. know, in terms of where we are. So we can't even deliver what mm. you'd call a free and independent election. Even if we are to do the same, it will have a challenge. Unless you're having a decisive winner, like what happened in 2002, mm -hmm. when there was a whole wave, you know, and there was a margin of, a, a whole margin that actually allowed, you know, to have a decisive winner. Yes. And to give the winner the capacity to actually govern. Mm. And the, actually the opposition leader then, you know, Huru Kenyatta was gracious enough to mm. concede to defeat. Concede. Yeah. But after that, what have you seen? You even see mm. the reading from the Supreme Court ruling in 2017, how it severely indicted IABC. But what did Parliament do afterwards? It did not go in and strengthen that space mm. and allow IABC to clean up its space. Right. So I think those are structural issues that we have, mm. and we need to really focus and uh, face ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves as voters, as candidates, <laughs> as party leaders, mm. as financiers of this election, mm. what do we really want?
what do we really want at this particular point we need a break thank you all right we'll be right back <laughs> with edward and kevin Welcome back to now. Uh, let's just finish up this debate. Uh, Kevin, let me just get your point. Uh, Sidisa Sakaja was summoned by the DCI mm. and he's uh, set to appear before the DCI for the investigation. So, of course, the dispute uh, tribunal committee said that uh, it's not in their place to investigate uh, the, mm. the, the authenticity of this of, of, of Sakaja's papers. But yes. then, mm. uh, we, can we say that uh, Sidisa Sakaja is not out of the woods yet? Uh, Victor, what I would say is that uh, Senator Sakaja is not out of the hoods. Mm -hmm. He is not. Because remember, IBC was just saying, you know, uh, we have no mandate mm. to question somebody's degree. We have no mandate. Yeah. If you bring a degree, and the same, same degree we have seen before, uh, we have no mandate. We will clear you. However, if now the council, if the council of uh, commission of university education, mm. the DCI, or even the senate uh, of the school of the university where somebody went to, to university, mm. if they say you know we don't know we don't know this person, he has never come to our school. If they say that, and of course somebody has to go to court in the high court, and the court makes an order to IBC confirming. You no, know, the court must confirm and make a declaration that indeed that degree is not uh, authentic then the IBC will act upon that. And remember, Victor, uh, judiciary is very independent. Mm -hmm. And I know judiciary will not act on these political uh, issues being put across by the Kenya Kwanza team, mm -hmm. where, of course, they are accusing the state of interfering. If uh, somebody goes to court, of course, if Sakaja, the, the DCI, open a criminal case, of course, the case will go to court. Mm -hmm. The question is, we don't know when it will end. Yeah. It may take years mm. before it will end. Yeah. But if some 49 days to go now. Exactly, we have 49 days to go. So I think uh, uh, it is high time that also, so that we also have, uh, have uh, uh, the people of Nairobi, mm. yeah, there must be some level of uh, honesty and fairness to them. If indeed Sakaja is not qualified, mm. then it should not be cleared. But if he is qualified yeah. and the case is, is prosecuted and he, it is determined that indeed his degree was fake, there was forgery, then, then it is not good of maybe after one year into, after yeah. he is elected, then now they say he's not qualified, they do another election. It will not be fair to the people of Nairobi. Right. So this thing, Victor, let us look at it as affecting not those candidates, mm -hmm. but the people, the voters. Even the issue of Sonko, don't look at the issue of Sonko as a person. Mm. Look at the people of Mombasa who may want to vote for him. For Sakaja as well, don't look at Sakaja mm. as a person. Look at the people of Nairobi. So, uh, and the issue of state being condemned to be affected, to be uh, trying to influence, mm. I think I don't agree with that. I think Sakaja also and his people yeah. should know that this matter is, uh, uh, is having an ongoing uh, investigation. So, if I was to be their lawyer, I would advise them to stop de discussing that issue. Mm. But you see now they are trying to politicize it. Maybe they believe by politicizing and saying, you know what, we, yeah, we are sure. being uh, targeted by the state, yeah. you know. They think they'll get sympathy votes from the supporters. Mm. That, if I was the advocate, I would tell them, please, just go do your own campaigns, but don't discuss this issue. Yeah. But so his issue is a, is a life issue and an issue which involves uh, forgery, mm. uh, fraud, because, you know, those, some of these things is being asked to provide. Yeah. If indeed you went to school, you should provide. You should provide. Like a uh, letter of admission. Exactly. Like, uh, I'm sure, Victor, you have your transcript somewhere. Mm -hmm. You have your, 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 maybe you took some photos. We, we did. Yeah. So the, yeah. The so called lamination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also people in the social media are trying to create all manner of jokes yeah. about it. Mm. Yeah. So I think the best thing, Victor, is to ensure that Sakaja's rights as a Kenyan are upheld, mm. but as you uphold his rights, also the rights of the people of Kenya and the people of Nairobi must also prevail. Must also prevail. Right. And Victor, IBC, 
uh, will then be able to act upon any orders by the court. Mm. And remember, the court, uh, is, the High Court is superior to the IBC. Mm. These committees were set up so as to, you know, apart from these high profile cases you're hearing, there have been more than almost 300 complaints mm. brought before that committee. Here, Sakaja Nimonia is not just one issue. There have been so many other issues. And I believe uh, IBC, from where I sit, uh, I've done their job. Now it is the work of DCI. Let Kenoti and his team and Mutiambai prove that they can do an independent job because okay. uh, this, uh, uh, the police service is independent. Mm. Yeah, Let them do a good job. Yeah, Let them be able to clearly mm. establish that indeed uh, this degree mm. uh, was not authentic. Right. And also the university, mm. uh, if they, they're saying they now teams university, let them also give their honest opinion. But if somebody went to university, Edward, and maybe the university has been approached by some other people, so that they, uh, they, 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 they dishon you. You know, it that's is that's upon that's you now. Right. You see, in IBC committee, mm -hmm. it was upon the, 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 the returning officers yeah, to convince the committee that Sakanja was not qualified. So the burden was on them. But now, at the level of I court, it will be now upon Sakaja. So he has a very big task. It is upon him mm. to prove beyond reasonable doubt that indeed his degree was genuine. Let him prove Let's that. Wait. Let's wait and see how it's going yes. to pan out because they have a date today with the DCI yes. and perhaps the developments that will come out from that grilling. Gentlemen, let's, let's talk about matters election uh, with just a few days to go. Uh, Kenya is a big boy internationally and even locally and regionally. So we have an election that is going to be determined by around 40 or thereabout. But then the question is, how is it going to be affected? Starting with you, Edward, the foreign policy that Kenya deploys out there that we subscribe to of peace, stability, uh, prosperity, and all that put together. How will this election uh, either make it or break the same policies? I think the challenge that we face is that um, um, as we talked about it, that our structural nature in the country mm. tends to paralyze even our other aspects mm. of, 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 of the country. We, 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 we seem to forget that the country is bigger than that one day. Yes. <laughs> and that makes us to be able to lose out on the bigger picture. But you can actually see the gains that Kenya has actually been able to make in the past 10 years from, you know, asserting our space at the Africa Union um, in terms of what we've been able to achieve from a diplomatic perspective, the mm. dividends that have actually come from diplomatically. Kenya was one of the countries that actually was among the top five to, to ratify the Africa free continental trade free policy. Yes. We have actually supported, you know, the growth and of the, you know, the African passport, I mean, the aviation industry, the mm. policies that have been there. Kenya has been the forefront in terms of the COVID response also in Africa mm. and at large. We we see what uh, Ambassador Martin Kemani is doing at the UN Security Council, you know, for the first time Kenya is there. Mm. And not only that, when you come back home regionally, we are now very much vested in terms of the newly formed, you know, ATMIS uh, force that replaced Somalia mm. in, in Somalia, uh, replaced AMISOM. We are seeing also our forays, you know, in terms of looking at stabilizing East Africa space region in mm -hmm. terms of Congo and DRC. We have also seen our overtures also in Mozambique that has been there. So we have actually invested so much in these spaces. And the challenge for me is that if we do, we have a leadership that comes that will not be able to handle this kind of gains. Yes then we'll be actually relegated back. And you see, power is never, you know, given. It's taken. Exactly. If we do not assert ourselves, if we do not have a visionary cabinet secretary coming in in September, you know, to shape that kind of direction, mm. you know, we would have clawbacks. Remember, Parliament attempted to actually even reduce the number of our foreign missions at some point. Yes. And actually, Ministry and of Foreign Affairs... 120. Yes. yes. You know, Ministry of Foreign Affairs had to rebut and say, this is where we get our trade capacity capital you mm. know because all these kind of trade missions help us in terms of our bilateral engagement mm. and our actually trade capacity so i feel that it, it it behooves the next government to actually take a critical overview of our foreign dividends that yes. we have actually gotten and pursue them further because also just look at our import 
base. Mm. It's so huge, it's disproportionate to our export base. Mm. And that is a role of foreign policy, mm. how we can turn it around and ensure that the new KPIs we give to our next set of ambassadors yeah. will actually to be to turn around that import export dynamic, you mm. know. And so those are the kind of issues we are going to be weighing on the next foreign affairs minister and uh, the foreign affairs chef who is going to be in coming in in September. Mm. Most importantly, parliament has to also assert itself. And that's why for me I'm saying, the kind of voters we have vis-a-vis -vis the kind of voting we are going to do on 9th mm. has great implications. Key role because those are some yes. people who are going to pass this legislation. Exactly, they're right. going to pass this relation. Those are some, some people are going to be in the Foreign Relations and Defense Committee, mm. you know, and will actually have to adjudicate over the budgets that we'll have. Yeah. Look at it in terms of when you are having the COVID si situation and Kenyans were asking about where is the reparation budget, mm. <laughs> you know, and no one could be able to answer that. They say you don't have a reparation budget. Mm. So that if Kenyans are stranded outside there, they cannot be brought back to the country. Yeah. It's sad. But that is the work of parliament. It should be able to be able to make provisions in that kind of budget. Mm. So these are the implications that you are seeing beyond just your august putting your ink on the finger. It's huge. So it's that, huge. Uh, you know. Whatever you've mentioned is going to be determined on the 9th of August. Exactly. And then we are going to make you know uh, some progress yes in terms of enhancing them or just having a drawbacks as you put it but mm. kevin you know mm. we are enjoying a huge space <coughs> more so in africa kenya sits at number five uh, number six as one of the big e economies in africa mm. that's a big deal mm. but come august uh, after election a, a day or two three days after that election we usually even see the stock exchange getting affected in one way or another mm. Where are we as a nation to ensure that all this is stable past that 9th of August? Hmm. Yes. No, Victor, um, I am doing my PhD on international law and diplomacy. We'll, 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 we'll scrutinize your papers after that. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and one thing <laughs> I can tell you... Make sure you take pictures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I, I will take pictures of it. <laughs> right. But one thing I can tell you, Victor, mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, these elections mm -hmm. is actually a do or die. Yeah, on the Kenyans' image and status mm. in the international community. Mm. No, it is not a do or die before between Raila and Ruto. Yes, it is now us as Kenya. And uh, just as what Edward has said, mm. Kenya's uh, position in the international community, especially in Africa, mm. is very important. Mm. Remember, as we speak, the president, our president, is a chair of the ESC mm. community. I'm told today they're having a meeting to discuss the issues in uh, DRC Congo. Mm. Yeah. And of course, uh, uh, President Uru Kenyatta was given that position by the status yeah, of our country. Of our country. When it not comes as an to individual. Not, not, uh, not, as, not as, as a person. Mm. In terms of dealing with the uh, various uh, international matters, mm. so I think the outcome of the of these elections will play a critical role. Remember, there will be several international observers coming to observe these elections. Mm -hmm. They will see on what is happening whether a free, fair, and credible election was conducted. You see, uh, Victor, in the international community, uh, once a country elects or appoints somebody to be the head of that government, mm -hmm. whether president or prime minister, the first thing which is done is the recognition of that person by the international community. Mm -hmm. You have seen situations whereby uh, somebody is elected and other states fail to recognize yes. that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, If you're not recognized by other states, what will that mean? Those states will not engage with you. I remember where we sit mm. as a country. We are not free or we are not very, very independent from the influence of the international community. Mm. We fully depend on the international community because, we, of course, we, we live within the same community. Right. That's why when there is war in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, we will, we, we will feel that impact. There's a ripple effect as well as yes. you speak. Right. There's a ripple effect. Yes. And if there are issues in Kenya, like now the post-election values of 207, 208. To be honest, Victor, where we were internationally before 207 mm -hmm. is not where we are now. And people are saying, well, let's hope uh, in this 2022, 
to not be that way. Mm. Actually, uh, uh, foreign nations are even advising their citizens to stay away from Kenya. Yeah, travel advisory. Mm. Yes, there, mm. are, there are several travel adversaries. Yeah? So the question is, whatever we are doing, are we building confidence with the international community or we are scaring them? That's a question you should ask, uh, 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 answer. Mm. Number two, now after the election, the outcome, what will be the effect yeah, yes. of the election's outcome? We have seen the deputy president meeting uh, foreign envoys mm. in his current office. What is he saying? He's saying, you know, from where I sit, I have no confidence in the IBC. I think they will not conduct a free and fair and credible election. Mm. You also saw the former, former Prime Minister, the Azimio presidential candidate, saying, you know what, from where I sit, I think there are some issues which IBC must address. And that's why, Victor, everything rolls back to IBC. Even our standing in the, in the community of nations will depend on the outcome of, the, of, of this coming election. Yes. That's why they are very, very important. And as Kenyans, as we choose our leaders, Article 1, mm. sovereignty belongs to the people. Kenyans, as we choose our leader, let us look at the impact of our choices mm. yeah, in the international community. If, if the leader, because somebody was saying, you know, these manifestos, Victor, which are normally given by candidates, they are rarely uh, implemented. Followed, exactly. Uh, and they are rarely followed, Victor. People just want to give very good promises mm. so that they can win the arts of Kenyans. But, but a challenge I can pose to these candidates mm. is one. Okay. As Let's you as you seek that position. The challenge I can, I can give you is that, are you seeking that position for your own interest or for the interest of Kenya mm. and all Kenyans? Mm. You see, if you seek a position for your own interest, even if you win, you will not even have that sense of uh, dignity mm. in that position. But if you do it for Kenyans and God enables you to win, you'll be able to do a good job. So it is upon uh, our, our candidates, the four of them, yeah. Yeah? let them know that the position of this country is far beyond them. Mm. 20 years to, our decisions now will affect us 20 years to come. Exactly. The peace which has been in Kenya since uh, post 208 to, to date is, is what has enabled President Uru Kenyatta to be the chair of ESC mm. and also for mm. Kenya to sit at the UN uh, Security Council. Mm. That's a high level uh, position for Kenya. And also our relations with outside world will really depend on is this person who is, who is coming in as a president, will he be able to relate well yeah. with the outside world? Okay. Let, yes. let me ask you, Edward, how is Kenya's stability, economic muscle, and diplomatic leadership uh, be essential after, after this election? Because as he's put it, we are sitting in the United Nations Security Council. President Kenyatta is the chair of the East Africa community. These are big positions, so to speak. Well, um, part of the, the muscle that we get is not just in terms of the, 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 the influence we are wielding in these yes. other countries, uh -huh. you know, because of our trade capacity, but also the fact that we have been considered for the longest time uh, an international hub mm. for a lot of, you know, diplomatic organizations, international organizations are setting their space here. I mean, the brand that Kenya has actually been selling out there is that we are the gateway to East and Central Africa. And so you'll find a lot of the international organizations would rather set up the headquarters for Africa here mm. as they can be able to launch out in the country. An advantage that you have been given in terms of our geographical positioning, our sophisticated uh, fintech space in mm. terms of our banking and our technology, and also the kind of uh, uh, value that we have been actually be able to get in this issue that at least uh, Unfortunately, some people are despising uh, our education capacity. Mm. It's very, very good outside there. And it's un unfortunate if some members um, uh, of the political class are trying to trivialize it mm. because Kenyans are known to be high level workers. You know, we have some of the best brains that have actually be benefited the world, you yeah. know, at large, you know. And they're occupying very key spaces internationally. I mean, if you look at the kind of space that Kenyans are actually occupying outside there. So, yes, we have the capacity. Capacity. We have the opportunities that are there by virtue of years of investment, mm -hmm. you know. But also, most importantly, as we are saying, is that we need to get to a place whereby the next government 
seizes the opportunity and drives forward mm. the message, you know. I hope that we will get to a place whereby we'll be able to turn around the concrete diplomacy we're having with China to a place whereby we can be able to have a better kind of engagement, mm. not just infrastructure and, you know, um, uh, that level of engagement alone, but also in other spaces, especially in science and technology, mm. spaces where we need to be able to move forward. And I think it will be how we will be able to construct the next nexus of our foreign policy. Mm. Um, right now we are seeing so much to do with commercial diplomacy, mm -hmm. well and good, but we need to move forward to another step. But I think those are issues which are going to be discussed at whole of cabinet level. Mm -hmm. Because also issues to do with, for example, the kind of education you are actually putting forward, yeah. like the CBC dynamics that are, we are there, are they going to make us competitive with other countries, you know? Look at our sporting industry. Mm -hmm. We are banned by, <laughs> by FIFA. We, yeah. we have challenges, yet sports is one of the best and all these opportunities. And putting Kenya yes. in a very awkward situation exactly you know sports is a very strong cultural diplomacy tool yes. uh, if you look at it you know look at our investments in terms of music and arts we have not been able to exploit that space very well yet mm. that puts us there when we see someone like you know lupita nyongo out there as yeah, a, one yeah. of our top ambassadors you mm. know and so there are a number of aspects that actually we have to look at um, alongside the culture the, the commercial diplomacy cultural mm. diplomacy that you were looking at stem diplomacy is a very emerging area we need mm. to be able to focus on how are we positioning our scientists you know we have now a challenge in terms of post covid what are we talking about our scientists you know who mm. are in kemriki Leafy, yeah. and these are the spaces so it's a wholesome 360 degree approach to diplomacy yeah. that I think the next cabinet needs to really focus on and nuance itself towards it. Others will be doing, you know, just old age diplomacy whereby you become an ambassador and you appoint your fellow cronies and fellow village mates mm. to go to that embassy and wait for the time you'll be recalled back. And, and that will be pitiful for us. Mm. But at the same time, because our ambassadors are vetted by parliament, I think Kenyans need to ask themselves who are they actually, you know, appointing and going to vote for in Parliament yes. who are going to be now voting, vetting the kind of uh, ambassadors we'll have. Mm. Because if you have weak parliamentarians, it means even the quality of assessment and vetting and oversight of over uh, executive decisions or the candidates that the executive will present as ambassadors mm -hmm. will be so weak and poor. You know, they will just be rubber stamped yeah. and go. But, but, but Kevin, are, are Kenyans aware of such kind of, uh, of, of, of spaces that Edward <coughs> is trying to outline? Because when you look at last week, the Ministry of Interior had uh, a, a, I mean, a meeting with, with all the foreign envoys and even people who have been uh, picked to represent Kenya in the next regime. But then, Kenyans themselves, we are heading to an election. Our foreign policy, the local trade uh, uh, strategies and what have you, are we in a position to say that we are going to elect leaders, that whatever they are going to put on the table of the floor of the house, whatever is going to be, is going to have, is going to have a ripple effect at the long, in, the, in the long run? Are we aware as Kenyans? Uh, unfortunately, Victor, <coughs> majority of Kenyans yes. are not fully aware of the ripple effect and the impact of the, 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 the foreign policy mm -hmm. on our country. They are not fully aware. The few elite who are aware of that, and seize the opportunity and run with it. Exactly. Right. And actually, now the the real real voters, mm. who are the masses, don't even know these things. Mm. And also, unfortunately, Victor, the 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 the, the candidates benefits from the ignorance mm. of Kenyans or lack of knowledge by the the, the Kenyans mm. on those issues, mm. because if somebody for sure, even from their uh, educational or professional background mm. are not in a position to help uh, improve yeah, and advocate uh, uh, for the status of Kenya as a country uh, in the international world, then that's an issue which actually the voters should consider when they are voting for that person mm. because these issues affect our country. And I agree with the, my brother Edward on the, on the, on the, on the fact that uh, Whatever, uh, whatever uh, privileges we are enjoying, yeah, of course, based on our geographical location as a country and also our influence in, the, in, in Africa as a continent. Because, you know, when, 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 when somebody outside Africa uh, thinks of investing in Africa, mm. believe you me, Kenya is on the top of their list. 
yeah, because we have been able to place ourselves somewhere mm. yeah, internationally. And that's something we should actually protect. We should protect our, our, our position. We should yeah. protect, we should look, look at how even our neighbors, uh, Uganda and uh, Tanzania, sometimes they envy us. Mm. Yeah? But uh, in the long run, they know that Kenya is ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah? Kenya is ahead of them. So I think uh, the people we choose, because if, let's, let's even forget about the president. Let's look also at the MPs. You know, members of parliament, both in the National Assembly and uh, in Senate, mm -hmm. play a very critical role, Victor. They're the lawmakers. The lawmakers. Yeah. But people concentrate on the on, on the pre, on the executive, the mm. president, forgetting this MP, this senator, plays a very critical role. Mm. You know, for Kenya to adopt and ratify an international treaty, uh, it is the parliament which does that. Even before any law is ma is made, actually, it is the parliament which makes the law. The work of the president is just to to execute. Mm. To sign. Okay. Yeah. Edward, so I think uh, these elections, Victor, all the way from the county assembly, mm -hmm. yeah, because even in the county government nowadays, actually the county governments have been allowed to get direct funding from donors. Mm -hmm. Initially there was uh, there was opposition from the from the parliament, mm -hmm. but now donors can actually directly, and we are, I have seen actually in the counties where World Bank is directly funding the counties. Mm -hmm. Look at where we are coming from, COVID-19. And we are trying to now revive our economy. Mm. Yeah, we are trying to revive everything. I think these elections, all the way from the wards, the MCS, senators, MPs, to the top, the president, will play a critical role. Because the laws we make at the counter assemblies, mm. the laws we make at the, at, the, at the parliament, are the laws now which enable uh, international uh, people, the investors, mm. to look at Kenya and, and, the, and, and be able to be satisfied that there is a good ground yeah. for doing uh, my business. All right. Because people, and anybody who wants to invest in the country wants to feel secure. And stability. And stability. Right. Actually, that, the, the, that, the important thing is stability. That, that brings yes. me to this point, Edward, because we, uh, as we speak, most of the international investors are looking at Kenya and say, hold on. Uh, they have an election in the next 40 or so days. So instead of investing, to pick a break, Kidogo, how can Kenya safeguard that to ensure that even as we near the election, the investors, yes, they have got their capital ready, but they are not afraid of investing in the country because of post-election effects? I think we have a case study, and that is the case study from the central bank. And the governor said, we cannot stop banking. Mm operations just because of an election mm. so he secured and gave confidence in the market that allows that banking operations in as much as the bank will not be open but online banking and digital banking and all forms of banking and transactions and trade can continue mm. in the country regardless of the election these are the issues that we need to be able to look at that kind of tone of confidence of saying we have put in measures we have worked to stabilize the banking sector and we can ensure that the banking can continue with and before during and after the elections mm. is very important because remember in 2007 we could not be able to have that level of confidence those outright it paralysis was eroded. yes yeah so right now 2013 and 2017 will show that people could be able to vote and continue to do your transactions in your banking space your atms are working your money my mobile money work markets are working mm. online transactions are working that is the confidence we need to have in other sectors and it comes from confidence that we give to the electoral governance institutions that mm. are there and also the kind of um, public order management that will be able to deal with, you know, outcome and protests and any kind of displeasure in that mm. so that we can be able to say that any form of displeasure or dis, um, disagreement in terms of the vote can be handled by the judiciary, mm. you know, and so that people can be able to vote peacefully, continue on with their business. We want to come to a place whereby you vote and call, go back and open your hardware and open your markets and continue yeah, working. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to be feel so invested that you have mm. to be part and parcel of the people waiting at the 
polling center mm. to count the votes because you feel like you're going to be, you know, the votes are going to be, you know, stolen. That is a challenge which we need to have in terms of how do we sh secure that process whereby once we cast our votes, we are sure that the IBC will be able to do the right thing in terms of vote counting and transmission. We can go back and continue with our business and wait for the announcement. After the announcement, if we feel aggrieved, we go to the courts because we know that the courts will be able to deliver a fair judgment mm. on that matter like ha what happened in 2017. So those are the spaces we can be able to bring confidence so that even donors can sit back or investors can sit back and say, uh, the, 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 the election process will not deter any form of mm. investment. My investment is secure exactly. in this kind of space. Right. Uh, Edward, I'll, allow me to just take a break. And we'll come back. You're going to pick it from there. But I also want to understand the fact that Kenya plays a very key role internationally. Mm. Pa post 9th of August, are we going to be on the same pedestal or we are going to sleep? three or four even ten steps down and if at all how will we get that position and come back to where we're supposed to be let's just take a break we are not due to me all right we are coming after this Welcome back now to the final stage of this discussion. Today we are talking matters foreign policy. Heavy words coming from brilliant minds, Edward and Kevin. So, Edward, back to you and finish your statement you're talking about. So, what I was saying is that where we are as a country, mm. it, it, it behooves the next set of, uh, the, the, the next cabinet and the next government that will come mm. to shape a very nuanced policy in terms of our trade engagement and our foreign policy engagement. And, and, and that will be able to take us to a place whereby we can be able to, you know, take advantage of these opportunities that we have been, that are around us mm -hmm. and we are dropping the ball. Look at a country like Rwanda, you know, which for the longest time it has been saying, you know, why should we bother with policy making? Let's go to Kenya and take that policy and come <laughs> and implement it. <laughs> You know, which actually did, <laughs> which actually happens because we know that our problem has been best policies, eh? yes, uh, sessional papers, policy papers, and briefs. <coughs> they are lying on the on the shelves. But are we proud our of problem ourselves? Is, is Edward, implementation. Are we proud of ourselves? It's a challenge because of the kind of cartelism we have created in these spaces that actually frustrate well-intentioned documents. You know, any kind of documents you find that are in Kenya are best brains. You know. Because we have actually invested in that kind of capacity yes. to be able to build very good brains. You know, look at institutions like Kipra, world over mm. acclaimed and respected, you know. You know, look at uh, Kemri, you know, in Kilifi, look mm. at Ilri here. You know, brilliant institutions we have. They give very sound advice, but we don't implement because of the kind of cartelism that we have allowed in these spaces. And now this is where Kenyans need to be able to look at it. And look at the kind of leaders they put in those spaces. Mm. Because what happens right now in parliamentary committees when they call you, mm. you know, it's a sham in terms of what they actually look for and what they vet. And this is the challenge that we have in terms of putting leaders who can have capacity mm. to be able to uh, address critical issues for national interest. Not even for their party interests, yeah. for national interests, mm. you know. And I think this is a challenge I'll give my brother here as, as the legal advisor of the WIPA party. Mm -hmm. After the elections are done, let him call the WIPA members, you know, into a Kamkunji and tell them for the first time to focus on national interest issues. Not their partisan issues, you That's know. That's a challenge. When, when you win <laughs> the whatever leader of the majority or my minority whip, mm. so beyond that, what are you doing for the country? What are you doing for the country? And if this challenge can be taken by all other political parties so that they whip their members mm. towards a national consciousness, I think we will be able to have use, best use of those policies that have been put forward. We will be able to address the pressing challenges of trade imbalance mm. that is there. Look at, for example, the Big Four agenda. Just one case study. And look at the housing agenda. The housing agenda was constrained because we don't have capacity for steel. Mm. 
steel production is weak in this country. So we have to import. We have to import. Which and at what cost? so expensive. You right? know, at right. what cost? And those are issues that parliament should be able to address and mm. say, what is the cost of the executive putting up a steel factory? It will employ many Kenyans in this mm. country. It will make use of our TVET capacity, you know. And in turn, we can even go back to exporting. We need to come to a place whereby people look at it that they can benefit the country more by the export capacity we have mm. rather than the 10 percent deals they'll make at import yeah and that is a consciousness that our leaders have to ingrain in themselves absolutely when we look at our constitution uh Katisia, yes. one of the best world over mm. the election is going to determine <coughs> how this constitution is going to be safeguarded mm -hmm. that is the supreme document that we enjoy as a nation yes many countries copy our constitution that's true we also copy this constitution from other jurisdictions but how are we going to safeguard this constitution, legally speaking, past mm. the election, having in mind, or even by electing the kind of leaders we are going to have to safeguard that election, mm. uh, so that internationally we are seen as a big boy mm -hmm. in, in, in globally, and our constitution also stands firm outside there. Yes. You know, Victor, uh, that's a very interesting uh, issue, because, mm. you know, I've never heard anyone complain that the constitution is is not good to them mm. this means that our constitution actually is one of the best yes if not the best in the world mm -hmm. and kenyans have been able to see that their pertinent issues have been captured by the constitution mm. so the question is not whether uh, the constitution protects you is the question of whether the leaders we we have do they implement this constitution? Mm -hmm. Because if our constitution is fully implemented, you will never see any Kenyan uh, crying that uh, their rights are being infringed, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the government is not taking care of them. Because the constitution provides fundamental rights and freedoms. It gives actually several provisions which aim at protecting the Kenyans mm -hmm. who are actually sovereign, who are the, the main, main uh, people targeted by the constitution yes but now as as kenyans we have to delegate our powers mm -hmm. and elect leaders who will implement the constitution and remember victor the implementation of this constitution does not, not does not only have effect on us as kenyans mm -hmm. but also how the international community uh, views us mm. You, you all remember the issue of uh, Miguna Miguna, how he was mis manhandled, yeah, you know? Yeah. He has a right as a Kenyan to come back to Kenya. The, co the court has said, uh, has given an order for him to be allowed back by the Minister of Interior mm -hmm. uh, uh, completely ensured that he could not come to Kenya. Personally, I was not happy about that. Mm -hmm. Because if the same thing was happening to me, I would, I would not feel happy. Mm -hmm. Because this constitution grants pertinent and important rights to every Kenyan. And now, if a foreigner sees what is happening to a Kenyan, mm -hmm. how the Kenyan law are mistreating that particular Kenyan, will, do you expect them to come? Yeah. The issue of the fuel shortage, uh, Edward, we remember what happened to the CEO of, uh, of Rubies. Yeah, where, when, where he was accused of, uh, yeah, you know, interfering and making mm. sure that... He was they, deported. Uh, he, he, immediately. Yeah. Did you see any action taken upon uh, CEOs of, of other uh, fuel companies? Because all, 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 all fuel companies were mm. doing the same thing. What am I trying to say? Mm. This constitution does not only protect the Kenyan, but also anybody who is within our country. Remember, this, this constitution is to protect anybody within our country. Because when a foreigner comes to Kenya, of course they have acquired a, a, a visa to come to Kenya. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan law must protect them. Mm -hmm. When we go to other countries, we must be protected. You, we all know how the international community, how, the, how, how, how that unity helped in uh, dealing with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You saw how people were being stranded in other countries. Some, uh, I saw a clip uh, of people in, uh, in, in Germany, yeah, in Netherlands, where people were suffering. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what does this mean? It means in full implementation of this constitution will actually have a strong and significant impact 
on our foreign policy. Mm. It doesn't matter the beautiful laws we pass. What matters is implementation of those laws. Yeah. Yeah. And Victor, let's also remember on the issue of uh, security mm. as a country. And you know, the elections uh, determine uh, how uh, our security situation will be. We have seen how the, 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 the government has been empowering the, the, the Kenya Defense Forces. I saw a bill which was signed into law by the president the other day, mm -hmm. whereby any member of uh, the Kenya Defense Forces, after they, they pass on, they are, their children mm -hmm. will be fully taken care of by the state. Education, food, what, name it. Yeah? So that now they are able to take charge and protect our country. Yeah? Because remember, Victor, uh, sovereignty of our country will depend on whether, whether we protect our borders and whether we make sure that our, uh, our country is not affected by any external mm. forces. Mm. We have seen what is happening in DRC. We have seen the conflict between uh, Rwanda and DRC. Yeah? We have seen what is happening in our neighbors, uh, Somalia. Yeah? And of course, uh, I've heard my brother say that now we have the Atmis not the Amazon, whereby there must be a transition. Mm. We all know the impact of uh, Al-Shabaab yeah, when it was happening. And we are happy that uh, at least that situation has ended. So I think, Victor, for us to build confidence in the international community, we, we need to begin by, by, by having leaders mm -hmm. who respect rule of law. And I agree with Edward again on the issue of they need to have national interest at their heart. Because if you have a national interest at your heart, it means you should know that the law you pass at Turkana County Assembly, that law will shape on the international perception of Kenya as a country. Remember, Victor, I've told you that uh, now, nowadays donors uh, can, can fund counties directly. Yes. I've had the opportunity of working in Macquen County. I was uh, the governor's political advisor, and uh, I could see uh, how several uh, foreign uh, envoys mm -hmm were coming to meet the county government and discussing how they can help the county government. They, are, they were doing that in the 47 counties. Actually, the, 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 the envoys are doing a lot of work in the counties. Mm. Why? Because they are seeing some level of, of confidence that this, because no, their role is, their, their, their aim is to ensure that they also tap in. You know, remember Victor, when these uh, envoys come to Kenya, yeah. they don't come to Kenya for our, uh, uh, for our interest first. They also have their own interest. Mm. And I've, I've listened to my brother on the issue of uh, the housing project and where there was a challenge with the steel. If you look even at, at the issue of fuel, Victor, there are so many uh, fuel uh, and oil resources in mm. our country. Have we been able to tap into them? The answer the is no. The, the capacity is then, then the question is... The refinery here yes. in Kenya to mm. do as, as that. Victor, um, as I finish, the question yeah. is why? Even with the steel, Edward, we are in a capacity to have our own steel. Mm. But you see, uh, with the influence of the foreign nations, mm. they make sure that we have to depend on them. We have to import from them okay. so that they flourish. So as we also engage, Victor, with these international mm. communities, let's also have our interest, a national interest, not where, where by Victor. But we have our national interest. Victor, and I know you want me to, to, to end there, but let me finish by saying this. In, in, just, in just one second, let one me just bring in, before I forget this, yes, because yes. he's also touched to that. Yes, when you talk of matter security, Edward, yeah. uh, mm. he, he's, he's touched on it. Matter security and trade. Kenya enjoys a big platform, all right? Uh, we have got our soldiers in Somalia for so long. President Kibaki initiated it, may he rest in peace, and now our soldiers are still uh, in, in that foreign land. The president is also sitting either this week today or uh, with other members of the community to look into the issue of DRC. Today, actually. Today. Yes. yes. When you look at that, how are we, wh where are we as a nation on that flatbed so that after election we are still regarded as a big boy on matter security and trade? Um, I think um, our country compact with the, the African Union because mm. uh, our engagement in, um, in Somalia was, 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 is under the African Union mm. uh, auspices that actually, you know, is managing that process in Somalia. Mm. And uh, now that we have a new government in Somalia, um, we know that now there is opportunity now to move forward and, uh, you know, 
perhaps have opportunity for a better management of the security situation mm. and hopefully you know you will be able to have now countries will start talking about a drawdown once Somalia has been stabilized mm. and you see these are missions that are actually crafted and drawn by the African Union in in, in concert with the United Nations yeah but in Congo you know our interest is because now this is a East Africa member right now mm. but there's also a lot of opportunity remember you know the rights a and privileges that resources we are Congo, getting right. you know in terms of Kenya Airways doing flights to Congo mm. it's 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 something there we have to talk about that and also there's opportunity for not only our banks which are going in that place you know mm. but also uh, uh, quite a lot of um, Kenyan businesses that can profit from that space so I think it is in the interest of Kenya to move forward I don't see a challenge because these are regional contra compacts mm. that are actually mm. and ratifications that are actually going to be there we just need to transition smoothly and that's why my prayer is that we have a decisive victory on ninth whichever candidate wins mm. and they settle into office with a robust agenda not just in terms of you know manifestos that are just aimed at you know tickling and making people happy and excited mm. but actually practical manifesto that can actually be able to take over the agenda of the day mm. and that for me is important because once we offload this campaigners and uh, you know the noise makers that come around the party yeah. space and get serious technocrats who can be able to take charge of those foreign policy and the security and the trade interests i think this country will go far what what do you, what do you think the, the foreign nations are thinking about kenya right now as we speak um imagine there are people sitting somewhere in a boardroom and they're looking at the kenya election with this number of days remaining to, to the polls what do you think is running at the back of their minds i think for most foreign countries, they work with what you call cooperation frameworks, mm. and they'll be looking at the cooperation frameworks and whether there'll be continuity of the same. They'll be looking at the development partnerships and the trade uh, interests mm. and whether there will be continuity of the same. They are currently scrutinizing, you know, each and every manifesto and trying to yeah. assess yeah. whether it fits with their intended policies yeah. and their trade interests. Mm. After that, once, you know, the new government has settled in, there will be overtures to be able to see how they can be able to align with a new government policy and that will be set forward. I hope that there will be a level of managed transition mm. in terms of aligning with that. And that's why you need a very strong person at the cabinet level in terms of foreign affairs. Because the first order of business, before even going externally, is to be able to give confidence to the domestic envoys that there will be continuity and there will be a new compact of engagement that mm. also works in the interests of the country i hope it will not just be another level of tokenism you know just awarding <laughs> people for the sake of it but actually putting people who have the best mm. interests of the country and supported by a very strong parliament and that's why for me my prayer and my plea to kenyans is that vote for mps who can be able to articulate issues better yeah. not just the person who speaks your language at home but also someone who can be able to articulate kenya's interests at the national level mm. well put kevin you know what what really happens that kenya enjoys a very big platform um on the market market space we export a lot we have got mm. our athletes we export sports all right as we speak this weekend is a huge one in sports in naivasha mm. you know that is something that as a nation we can be proud of when you look at that and election is just a few days you know away from us you can imagine the kind of interest that the international um, uh, market players are waiting to see whether they are going to tap their money into the market mm -hmm. they are going to withdraw and invest somewhere in other countries or they will take some kind of a sabbatical before they reinvest mm. The president has been inviting so many heads of state in state house. That signifies a very big kind of trust and relationship between Kenya and other nations. How can we just make sure that that relationship is uh, maintained? Yes, Victor, and that is the the point I actually wanted to, mm. to 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 state. Now you have and, a point to and, go. And now I have, I have <laughs> yes. And right. Victor, you've asked you've asked a very good question. And you have given us a very interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as we speak now, I'm sure uh, there are people somewhere outside uh, who are not Kenyans. Mm. These uh, envoys and maybe foreign heads of, of states, they are discussing on how they'll be able to uh, 
uh, benefit with the outcome of the Kenyan mm. elections. Mm -hmm. So, Victor, uh, these people, sometimes they don't have our interest as a country. They have their own interest. So it is upon us, and of course through our leaders, yeah, as they engage those foreign nations, yes. as much as those uh, nations want to benefit and exploit, mm. for lack of a better word, mm. our nation, we must also benefit from them. That's why diplomacy is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an issue which, if not properly handled, mm. may make us suffer instead of benefiting. And Victor, all these foreign nations have an interest in the Kenyan elections mm -hmm. because the government which will come in will impact and determine so many things in the international world. Yes. The president who will be elected after 9th of August will be a key interest to these foreign nations. Mm. They want to know. That's why sometimes they directly uh, or indirectly influence. Mm. And that's why you saw uh, William, uh, the, the deputy president going to America, then UK. I think the former prime minister did the same thing. Mm. You know, the, the, the truth is these people get support from the international community, mm. from nations who wants to uh, just uh, make sure that uh, their people get in and they benefit. So we must be careful as a country. And as we engage with these uh, foreign nations, we must have, and the key thing, and I think I liked how Edward put it, they have, uh, the national interest must be very key mm. in the hearts of these leaders. Don't go there because you know, you're know you getting backing from this nation and you want to make sure that you, you, you have their interest. Because Victor, as a country, we are very rich. Actually, Kenya is very rich, mm. Victor. If an fuel becomes 200 per, per liter, Kenyans will complain one day, the next day they'll keep quiet. You'll see traffic jam in Nairobi. Kenya is rich mm. as a country. Mm. But now, Kenyans are suffering. Should Kenyans suffer when these foreign uh, nations are benefiting? Yeah. The answer is no. And the role we play in the international community is very critical, Victor. Yeah? It's very, very critical. Mm. We must make good use of that opportunity we have in the international community, Victor. Mm. The issue of... Uh, uh, the security of our nation and uh, uh, trade balance, you know, stability is key. Mm. If we have a stable government, Victor, then it means our economy will improve. Mm. Where we are seated right now, Victor, the cost of living has gone high. The poor Mwanainchi down there, and Victor, you asked whether these Kenyans know the impact of uh, our choice, the impact of the foreign, foreign uh, uh, nations, mm -hmm. Uh, on us as a country. Do they know that the choice they'll make of the, that MCA, that MP, that president will also e e uh, have an impact on their lives? Mm. Do they know? They don't know. They All know. they know is whether is, uh, that uh, Baba has promised me this, mm. Ruto has promised yeah, me this. I'm they don't I'm know. Told, I'm told we're running out of time, but yes. let, me, let, me, let me ask, l allow me to treat that as your, your, your closing remarks. Let me, no, let no me, my let closing me, remarks mm. is... No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> allow me to treat that as yours. Okay, thank you. Because thank you, we Victor. only have one minute to go. Edward, okay. in under one minute, um, the issue of confidence. Do you think the international community is skeptical about Kenya's stability and investing, or there's that level of confidence uh, in, in 30 seconds, if you can? Yes, there's confidence. Uh, we, uh, our courts proved once again in 2017 that mm. they can be trusted, and I hope that now the political actors will rise to the occasion mm. and ensure that uh, we can have a smooth transition uh, from August 9th to the inauguration. Mm. Uh, I just, you ask for, 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 for a closing yes, remark. Please. As you do that, yes. how will Kenya other the nations benefit after elections but after elections yes how will other nations benefit yes. from us if we have stability in our country of course mm -hmm. uh, good business yeah no uh, stability of the government uh, ensures that there's good international relations mm -hmm. and tra international trade is is, is is well taken care of but mm -hmm. victor my closing remarks would be it is high time that actually the government of the day mm -hmm. No, we are, we, are in a, we'll be, we are like in a transition uh, period. Yes. Whereby, in, uh, for nine days to come, there will be a new government. How will that government influence or uh, help in advancing 
the agendas which have not been completed by the current government. Victor, the point is IBC mm. should actually be doing a vigorous campaign on civic education. Mm. Let people go out there and vote. There, there's usually a lot of voter apathy in Kenya. Mm. Yeah? The campaign should now be make sure you stand up, yes. you go and vote. And vote. Because actually, uh, if there is a uh, good voting, even if Victor you lose, you'll know anyway, with the kind of uh, election which has happened, I think yeah. I've won or I have lost fairly. Yeah. And uh, the outcome I'm, of I'm our election will have an impact mm. on how the foreign nations uh, treat us. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. I think thank that's you. the way to stop that discussion. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Today mm. we've been talking about matters national relations and international relations, where Kenya stands and what we stand to lose or benefit after 9th of August. We've been speaking to Edward Wanyoni, who is an international expert, a researcher, a trainer, etc., etc. His CV is so huge, as well as Kevin Katiz who is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and currently sitting as an advisory of Kalonzo Musioka Campaign Secretariat. That's where we stop it at this particular point. Thank you so much for your valid company. My name is Victor Lowe. Have a good morning.